All right, we have the anti-helminic therapies today. Anti-parasites, anti-health, minic. All right, another lecture that's kind of small, not a lot going on. Just focus on the drugs here. Um, yeah, let's just get into it. So this is gonna be FYI stuff. So, spoiler alert, FYI slot. No, um, but yeah. So these are parasites that we are interested in killing because they are wreaking havoc on our bodies as human hosts. They're like little alien invaders, right? Um, the mechanism actions for a lot of these drugs are not completely understood. So good news, maybe? Yeah, so a lot of these are not fully elucidated, as they say. Um, so don't stress too much about the mechanism of action um, for these drugs. There's some that have a little bit more details than others, but yeah, we'll see those here. So um, these, yeah, just go ahead and read through this. This is an FYI one, but just go ahead and read through that. Um, you will be able to get some of these agents only through the CDC. So I put their telephone number there too. If you guys just give them a call, tell them what's up. Just say hi, see how they're doing. I don't know. They're in Atlanta, right? Atlanta. They're in Atlanta. Um, so yeah, you give them a call. And I think this is a hyperlink. So you want to go to their website too. Um, definitely as with all infectious disease stuff, all joking aside, the CDC is paramount, king supreme, the number one in the U.S. Just go to them for anything you, any infectious disease, any kind of thing you think the CDC may even have, just go to their website, um, check them out. There's a, they're a great up-to-date source for everything. So, um, yeah, check them out. They're great. I love those guys. They won't call me back. No, I'm kidding. I keep leaving voicemails, but it's like, come on, CDC. No, I'm joking. All right. Ivermectin. So some of these you hopefully will kind of remember from the first module when we did the anti-infectives. I know it's a total blur, but, um, Ivermectin is one that pretty popular here. First, we have the, you can go ahead and put a use up here. If I had a little thing where I could write and I was cool, um, I, but I'm not. Just write use, what it's used for is all these things here. Just go ahead and read through those. Um, notice it's, it's kind of a grab bag of things. And these are things that it's not used for. So uh, the reason I have this is because historically, some of these things they would use it for and they thought it was useful or whatever, but um, it's not anymore. So you can put, don't use or not use or whatever. This is also, um, just please note that it should not be administered to pregnant or lactating women. And then for small children, this is their weight in kgs. For all you um, U.S. listeners out there, go ahead and convert that to pounds if you're having trouble, whatever. But yeah, so it's less than um, 15 kgs. And um, also, depending on where the person's coming from, where they're infected, what part of the world you're treating this patient, you know, that's something that's another instant too. And then this is another um, instance where it should be avoided. Next, we have a class of antiparasitic agents. These are called the benzimidazoles. So again, they end in the azole, but they're not antifungal. So students, you know, they sound like look like drugs. Please don't get those confused. All right, another lecture. I'm trying not to cough on you guys, so I'm going to be pausing a lot trying to get that cough button activated. But uh, <laughs> so anyways, a class here, antiparasitic drugs. We have four here. We'll talk about these a little bit more in detail. Um, this is the best guess as far as their mechanism of action. This one has a little bit, a little bit, uh, maybe better understood mechanism of action. But again, don't stress about it too much. You um, Note in the Pinworm lecture too, we talk about these should be avoided in pregnant women. Note it's when possible. So again, depending on what part of the world you end up treating, uh, what pop patient population, it may be indicated according to the WHO, the World Health Organization and the CDC. Um, they There is some instances, but for testing purposes for my course, just it's okay to think about just avoid in pregnant women for these medications. Um, that is, a, that is a safe kind of safe bet. I would have to write a test question that's really specific and really like you're in another country on vacation and you're treating, so, you know, it'd be like a kind of a crazy test question if I wrote, wrote about that. So don't, don't stress too much about it. Just know that again, if you, depending on where you're practicing, end up in another country or wherever. It's kind of exciting, right? You guys could like end up anywhere in the world, right? Practicing medicine is pretty, pretty cool. Um, that medicine's universal and stuff, but, um, but anyway, so yeah, just, but for most patients here in the U S um, they should be avoided. So that's take on point, I, I think for, and then for testing purposes for my test, um, I don't want it to get too, too crazy for you guys or too confusing for you guys. Albendazole's first one here, broad spectrum of activity. So just use for a lot of different things. Please note those. 
Um, also, some other things that can be used for just go ahead. And I don't want to read all these things through for you guys. Plus, like some of these things, I, I don't know how to say that. Bifurcum, I can say that, but I'm not even going to try. And I'm going to like start coughing and laughing and stuff. But anyway, so yeah, all that, all that's Latin, long Latin names. Um, it can actually, the absorption is enhanced, just FYI, with taking with fatty meals. So, but it depends on the infection. So, with uh, invasive systemic parasitic infections, it should be taken with fatty foods, um, but they should not be taken with with uh, fatty foods if it's for an intraluminal parasitic infection. Um, so, with no systemic involvement. So, that's kind of don't don't worry about that. But just you know, just know depending on the in- type of infection, um, you know, with or without without um, without food. But that's just more of an FYI stuff for you guys. Side effects, uh, do pay attention to this. Um, common adverse effects here, first bullet, and then the rare but serious ones listed down here. Um, you notice just it's mainly GI discomfort um, is going to be the main common adverse effect you'll have to worry about with these. Mebendazole. So this is interesting. Um, this one, it's just here for historical purposes. Unfortunately, it's no longer available in the U.S. Um, it's one of those that uh, it was Vermox. And so a lot of older practitioners, you, well, you guys aren't older practitioners, but older practitioners may remember it and be, you know, remember it or whatever. Um, it is still available in other countries, but in the U.S. it is, quote, uh, the Vermox 500 milligram chewable tablets are only available through Johnson & Johnson's Vermox Donation Program, and that's in all caps, uh, to help reduce the burden of soil transmitted helminths in endemic countries. There are currently no plans to make Vermox 500 milligram chewable tablets commercially available. So yeah, so it is USD, US FDA approved. Um, but again, you go to the, if you would go to the Johnson Johnson website, if you're a crazy person like me, because it was like, what I, you know, anyways, and it quote from the website of Johnson and Johnson, presently, there are no plans to make a Vermox chewable commercially available. So, so anyways, it's just kind of historic fact, but it is available in Mexico and Canada. So, I mean, I don't know, again, where, where you guys end up practicing and then there is that special program with johnson and johnson it looks like you could maybe get it depending on who you're treating they have the vermox donation program um so interesting it was one of those and this was kind of a controversial drug it was like generic and cheap forever here in the u.s and then um some companies bought up the the patent and then they jacked up the prices in 2016 and i don't know it's just one of those unfortunate unfortunate things that sometimes happens with um medications and they become unaffordable but anyway so that's just a little history lesson for you guys don't stress too much about that one uh, this is another one that's not available in the u.s um normally but you can get it if you need to through the cdc so i have that here I have their telephone email i don't have their instagram they're probably on twitter right i don't know yeah cdc um what i don't know what their handle is but um you can definitely go through the cdc and get this if you need to because it is a f- drug of choice for this specific liver fluke infection um, so this is triclobendazole um, is the drug we're talking about here. Um, you can also go directly to the manufacturer in Switzerland. So you could fly over there, take a trip, and then, no, I'm kidding. You just contact them and they'll mail it to you. But it'd be, I just want to go to Switzerland, so I thought it'd be cool. <laughs> it's a reason to go to Switzerland. Just tell your employer, you're like, hey, yeah, you know about that vacation or whatever. This person has a liver fluke infection. I can only get this if you let me go to Switzerland for two weeks. And I don't know, they'll probably fire you and laugh at you. Or uh, yeah, that, but anyways, a little boy can dream, right? I can. I, I'm gonna ask um, Mr. Embrace actually if I can go to Switzerland to do some investigational. Research. It probably won't work. Thiabendazole. So slightly different spelling here. This is an older one um, that it um, has some activity or it has some um, spectrum activity. It does have frequent and severe side effects. So limited its use. Um, it's, it, and if it is used or prescribed, it's typically topical because if there's less systemic exposure, less risk of adverse effects and stuff. But again, just please note this one is frequent and severe adverse effects. So, um, probably not something you're going to be prescribing and, um, and using kind of staying away from that one. So, and some of the adverse effects you have to be concerned with are dizziness, nausea, vomiting, drowsiness, uh, pruritus, which is issue skin, headache, neuropsychiatric disturbances, hepatitis, and then hypersensitivity reactions are really bad with this, including Stevens Johnson syndrome. Um, so, anyway, so yeah, it's very niche use, um, and you know, maybe only for this specific type of infection. Um, but, anyways, 
Oh, I have them listed there. What a not smart person. I was going to call myself an idiot. I forgot I had this slide in here. All right. Sorry, guys. I promise I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. But yeah, I just read you the next slide. Sorry about that. Next, we have praziquintel, which is the generic for biltricide, the brand name of that one. A little bit easier to say, I guess. Um, has some activity here. Mechanism action unknown. Um, adverse effects pretty well tolerated. Some GI stuff, some um, CNS adverse effects, headache, dizziness, drowsiness. Um, those are just common adverse effects there. Other agents um, that are available, we'll go through here. First one is DEC, the diethyl carb. Carbamazepine. Um, this one has some um, activities against these microorganisms here. Mechanism action unknown. Go ahead and read through this. Um, it is available from the CDC. This is another one. This DEC is one you'll have to go through the CDC to get. Pyrantel. This is one we are talk talked about in or will talk about in the pinworm infec infection or pinworm treatment. I don't know if you guys have listened to that lecture or not or not. I already recorded it, so I was like, we already talked about it, but you may not have listened to the pinworm lecture. But it's in the pinworm, <laughs> spoiler alert, it's in the pinworm lecture. Um, it is over the counter, it's well tolerated. Um, you usually can go with the first line treatment and go ahead and refer to the pinworm treatment. I talk a little about it a lot more there. Nitazoxanide. This one, uncertain unknown mechanism of action. Um, it does have FDA approval for these infections here. I uh, noticed GRDS is on there as well. Um, but yeah, just read through this and just, you know, um, has oxaminoquine. Um, don't worry too much about this. This is more FYI. It is not available in the U.S., um, but you can read through this again, depending on if you end up practicing other countries or whatever it is available elsewhere. And that is it. That was the last slide. So thank you guys for your time and attention. As always, I really appreciate it. And um, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, whatever, please email me and I'll hopefully be able to help you address those issues. And so that is it for this presentation. I will talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.